My childhood best friend, Marie, and I were around 11 or 12 years old at the time. Marie's family had their own campsite in a provincial park about two hours from our hometown and would spend the entire summer each year living in their camper out there. This particular summer, I was able to go and stay with them for a week, and we were excited to spend our time adventuring around the forest. On the last night that I was there, we decided we wanted to hurry down to the ice cream shop by the lake before it closed. It was early evening at this point, still pretty bright out, but beginning to lose light. The path we took was down a short slope right next to the main road with maybe ten feet of thick brush and trees in between. On the other side was the forest, with more tall, thick brush. So we were walking along, not seeing a single other person on the path in front or behind us. We hear a sudden rustling and snapping of branches, similar to the sound of maybe a deer moving through the woods. I wouldn't have thought anything of it, but then the sound of running footsteps follows. Marie glances back and suddenly grabs my arm, urging me under her breath not to look back. At the same time, the running stops. I don't know why I didn't ignore her and get a look myself. I guess I could sense the real fear in her voice and chose to listen. We both start to panic, getting that feeling like when you're running up the stairs after turning on the basement light. We pick up speed as much as we can without breaking into a sprint, knowing the ice cream shop is only about a minute walk away at this point. The path soon breaks, and we're in the parking lot. Suddenly, Marie steers me hard to the left, heading towards the lake in the boat rental instead of continuing straight to the ice cream shop and I go along with it silently, understanding ice cream is no longer an interest right now. Marie is clearly panicking at this point. We are both looking around, but it seems whatever scared her is nowhere in sight at this point. Marie walks up to the boat rental and gets us a kayak, and we climb in and begin to paddle out to the middle of the lake. As we paddle, she tells me that there was a, a man behind us and that the man had stopped running at us very abruptly upon making eye contact with her. He had been wearing a long black coat with the hood up, despite it being in the middle of July. It had a terrible smirk on his face, and she swore that as he stopped running, she saw him put something shiny away into his coat. He appeared to have just emerged out of the bushes after we walked past, hearing the sounds we heard right before he came running down the path. We reach the center of the lake and stop paddling. I pull out my Nokia brick phone that my parents had, thank God, given me just in case. I hand it to Marie and tell her to call her parents to come pick us up. As the phone rings, I see her look out past me on the shore and go pale, lifting a hand to point to what she's seeing. I turn, and there was the man stalking his way around the path that circled the edge of the lake, staring at us. We sat in the middle of the lake and watched him do two full laps, never looking away from us, before finally disappearing. It took a few tries to get a hold of her family. We were freaking out so bad the whole time. As the sun got lower and lower, we did manage to have someone come with the, to the truck, but at the same time, we reached the shore, it was pretty dark outside. I don't know what we could have done if we hadn't been able to call for a ride. Looking back, I don't know why we didn't just go up to the ice cream shop and form an adult there and ask her parents to come get us then. But it worked out. We got back safe. And we thankfully never saw that man again. <laughs>